And uh, the next speaker right now is Mr. Matt Brown, and he is the NST Vice President and, and VCIO of IT Security. And the title of his presentation is Critical Fundamental Steps for Your Small Business. It's always fun giving a presentation Friday afternoons before lunch. So um, <laughs> let me just bring up my presentation here. All right. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, good. So I'm going to dovetail a lot of what Warren said and what Mark said, but I'm also going to give you what I think is going to be some real world scenarios that we've seen with some of our customers. Uh, myself, I've been in IT for almost 25 years. I've been in charge of our security department for the last five years. Um, I'll say I've almost seen it all. Um, one of the things I'm hopefully going to show you is um, not only to emphasize some of the things that Warren and Mark said, but also to show you some real world examples of what we've seen at some of our customers and some of the customers what we've acquired because of some of the inefficiencies we've seen in organizations. Over the past couple of years, we have acquired more customers because of security issues than anything else. Nothing to do with price, nothing to do with quality of service, more along the lines of their securities don't match up with our standards, and we typically find, come in when there's a breach, when there's a problem, and hopefully can remediate. I'm going to give you a world, real world example today as well. So, first, first example I'm going to give you. About three years ago, I'm sitting in a client. We do a lot of ERP work for customers. I'm at the client, I'm there in the CFO's office, and the controller comes in and says, we need to pay our vendor. We're behind, we owe them about 150 grand, we need to send them a wire. Okay, raise my hand. Do you always send this vendor wires? Yes, we do. Okay, no problem. She comes out, she comes back in saying, wait, the vendor called, we need to do an international wire. Okay? So again, I ask the same question. We're sure about this. Yes, I spoke to Tommy about it. He gave us the okay. Great, you spoke to Tom about it. Tom's the owner of the company. Absolutely, great. Two days later, I get a phone call. Uh, nope, that wire went to China. Okay. Um, I asked her because I said, you spoke to Tom. Yes, I spoke to Tom. Did he email? <laughs> and I said, send me the email that Tommy sent you. And the first thing I looked at it, it's not even Tom's email address. Okay? So, um, you know, one of the things I think Warren emphasized and Mark emphasized, employee training is the number one key. Right? Number one key. You got to train employees. They got to know what to look for when, it, when an email comes in. They got to figure out what emails are good, what emails are not good how to look at headers, all these things to help protect your businesses. All right, so what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about some security statistics that I have on here. Uh, I know Warren mentioned layered approach to security. I'm a big believer in that. We're gonna talk a little bit about next generation firewalls, risk management, IoT is huge, like Mark mentioned, right? You're gonna get everything that's gonna be attached to the internet, right? Um, wife actually goes to a yoga studio that actually the yoga pads actually have Wi-Fi built in. <laughs> so, um, and employee security is awareness training. Okay? So just some quick statistics. We do a lot of work with Verizon, right? So 30% of all breaches are by misuse by employees. 32% of the world has opened a phishing email. Then you have, just like what Mark mentioned earlier, you have your external theft, you have your vendor theft, your internal theft. But the key thing here is these two numbers are all employee driven. <clears throat> Couple of quick uh, things here. 
61% of all organizations have had some sort of ransomware. So I'll give you our second scenario. Uh, we've been working, trying to actually acquire a company. They actually are a manufacturer. We've been working with them over the past, actually trying to get their business over the past couple of weeks. They called us yesterday. They have a ransomware attack. They are completely down. We went there yesterday, right? We spent about uh, 12 hours there yesterday. We at least stopped the ransomware from spreading. We gave them an estimate that it's going to take them about two to three days to be back up on. So when you talk about, you know, how serious it is, I know that Mark mentioned, you know, how much it costs when you do have a breach. You know, when you talk about two or three days not being able to do anything, okay? Um, all right, so let's talk about some scary statistics. Number one. 92% of all malware is, malware is delivered via email. 56% 56, 56 of all IT personnel state that targeted phishing attacks are their top security threat. Okay? Sometimes they just can't prevent the, an employee from clicking on an email. 77% of compromised attacks in 2017 were fileless, which means I'm getting an email that does not have an attachment, right? I'm getting a link. Um, I'm getting a message from somebody who says do a wire transfer, right? How many times have we seen or employees have said, hey, the owner of the company told me to do a wire transfer, right? And to be in Buffalo when you know that they're in Florida, right? So, um, you know, again, I, I can't stress this enough that we are at our weakest, I hate to say it, but we are at its weakest when our employees are not trained, right? Um, they are the, the ins and outs of our organization. I always reference networks to your home, right? It's very similar, right? When you think about your house, right? When you think about how you protect your house nowadays, right? Lock on a door, right? Lock on a window, right? But nowadays, what do we have? Yeah. Alarms, guard dogs, security cameras, rain, right? To see who walks up to our front door, right? So all these are added layers to protect our house. The network is no different. They have to add layers like Warren mentioned, right? We do the same exact thing. <clears throat> Average ransomware attacks cost a company on average five million dollars. This one actually blows my mind, right? But it takes an average of 191 days to be notified of a breach. Okay? I'll give you the another example. Okay? Uh, it's gotta be about two and a half years or so ago. Company calls me up and says we had our customer wire money to somebody else. We need to figure out how it happened. So they brought us in to do some forensics. And what had happened is somebody in their AR department right, had clicked on a phishing email and had provided this hacker with their username and password to their Office 365 account. This hacker had their office, their email account for approximately 67 days, okay? And nobody was aware of it, okay? On day 68, she sent an invoice to the customer saying, hey, Mr. Customer, you owe us $150,000. Here's your invoice. Please pay. Three minutes after she sent that email, this hacker who has access to their account sent an email that looked exactly the same, had the same exact invoice, right? So this hacker went through all the time, right, of looking and, and designing the invoice to make it look exactly the same and actually spent the time to realize how this AR person interacts with this customer, right? Because she didn't call them by their first name, John. She called them by the letter J, okay? And in this email that was three minutes later, 
they basically said, hey, I forgot to tell you about the new bank and routing line. <laughs> okay, here's the problem though, right? They actually did send it from their email address. So whose fault is it now, right? Their customers claiming, hey, you sent me an email from your email address? You asked me to pay that? I paid it. Right? So, again, so the point here then is it takes an average of 190 waiting days for people to know that there is an attack, that there's, there is some sort of breach. Okay? Uh, just a little thing. In 2016, it was 201 days. 25% of all organizations have a standalone security department. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that stat because sometimes if I claim I'm the security expert in the, in the company, now I'm part of the security department. <laughs> also, lots of companies have to declare a security expert. If you have to, if you're a HIPAA, if you have to comply with HIPAA, if you have to comply with DFS, you have to claim that you are, you have to uh, state that somebody is a security expert. 51% of all companies have experience industry control system security incident. I know that Mark mentioned, hey, this big box retail pusher, right, who had this breach, right? We all know it's Target, right? Um, <laughs> so, uh, again, the fact is, Mark mentioned that they came in through the HVAC system, HVAC system, and that's how they came in the Target, okay? 31% of companies have now experienced an IoT security event. I'm assuming that this is 31% of companies who actually do IoT, but um, one of the things that we'll mention when we talk about layers is actual network segmentation, which means if I have the HVA system, HVA system on the network, the HVA system, system cannot see the customer database, right? So that's where the flaw was when it came to Target, right? Where, hey look, there was some misconfiguration where if I can get in through the HVAC system, I can now see the customer database. This is a big one that Mark also mentioned as well. We only see 50% of all laptops are encrypted, right? So, you know, when you talk about, hey, look, somebody leaving a laptop in a cab, somebody forgetting it, somebody losing it, somebody stealing it, right? You know, it's really easy now to encrypt laptops, especially with Windows 10, they all should be encrypted. $21,000 is what it costs per day on average for a breach, right? So now think about this. We take 191 days times by 21,000. You know, I know Mark mentioned, hey, look, it costs $225, right, per record, right? But when you take the number of records you have times the number of days that it's out there, it's a lot of money. This is actually found this for this particular uh, session was, hey, the Verizon reports that all 91% breaches into manufacturing, right, are due to stealing of trade secrets, secrets, business plans, and IP. Okay, so in this industry, that's what they're looking for to go after. All right, so Warren mentioned layered approach to security, right? We do the same thing, right? I'm glad to see that uh, we're on the same page there. First layer, right? We consider it a network umbrella, right? So again, think about your house, right? You're typically arming the doors, arming the windows, something like that. There are ways to put a network umbrella on top of a network, right? Cisco's got a really good tool to do so. <clears throat> no more mentioned firewalls. I think everyone should have a firewall, right? And not just the firewall that's been in the office for the past five years, six years. It's gotta be a next gen, right? There are next generation firewalls that have come out over the past couple of years that have enhanced security features, right? I don't want to go into, you know, speeds and feeds, but this is critical, right? Otherwise, your, the firewalls that you have that, that don't have those enhanced security features are basically a router that somebody can crack into very easily. Network segmentation, right? I'm gonna give you next example, right? large dermatology practice asked me to do a risk assessment for them. The first thing I did is I walked in, sat down with their IT, connected to their Wi-Fi, which was guest, and immediately I could ping their server, okay? That's a problem. If I'm on the guest network, there's no way I should be able to see, right, your servers, right? So that's fine, notified IT about that. By the time I came back in to deliver their assessment, 
they had fixed the problem. And I said, hey, look, it's great. I'm glad you guys came in and fixed the problem. Right? Let's talk about problem number two. And I'm sitting with the office manager. And I'm like, oh, by the way, yesterday, you wore a blue blouse. And she looked at me like, were you here yesterday? Were you on the street of Manhattan? And I said, no. Your cameras are open to the internet. And whoever set them up didn't change the default username and password. <laughs> so I now have had access to your cameras, right? Since I started your risk assessment, right? So when we talk about network segmentation, right? Hey, look, your camera system should not be on the same network, right? As everything else, right? And nowadays, with technology and switching and VLANs and routing, you can do this fairly easily, right? Same thing with HVAC, same thing with guest Wi Fi. All of these should be segmented, right? <clears throat> I know Warren mentioned multi factor, right? Multi factor is key, right? One of the things we always ask, right, of any of our customers tell me about your applications. How many of them can do multi-factor authentication? Because if they can, you want to put that in place, right? Especially when it comes to email, right? When you talk about Microsoft, and I know that Warren mentioned, I think Mark mentioned as well, the majority of the world is either on Gmail or on Office 365, right? They both have tools for multi-factor authentication, right? This will protect your email in the event, hopefully, that somebody clicks on an email and is phished. This will help protect against it. Right? And not only when it comes to email, but any application that you are running, whether it's the ERP, whether it's a CRM, whatever it may be, if it's got multi-factor capabilities, put it in place. <clears throat> this should be a no-brainer, right? Everybody should have antivirus on it, right? But I know uh, Warren also mentioned, hey, disaster recovery, business continuity, backup is key, right? This manufacturing firm that we're working on now that we're trying to restore from them from where they work, they don't have good backup policies, right? So we're working through and trying to work through their backup disaster, um, trying to get their data back up and running, right? <clears throat> Security awareness training for employees, right? Has anybody ever heard of No Before? Yeah. Okay. So No Before, right, is a tool, right? Um, that basically what it does is it will provide your users with training, right, via videos from Kevin Mitnick, one of the world's famous hackers, right? So after he was done hacking, he decided to make money and <laughs> make create videos, money. and now he makes even more money, right, to help prevent people from getting hacked. So we almost enforce this as every single account, right, to say, hey, look, Every one of your employees has got to go watch these two videos, okay? And then we give a report. Hey, Bob has gone through the video. Great. Mary's halfway through. George hasn't started it. We need to go kick George, right? Um, but the other thing that No Before does as well is that it will send fake phishing emails to every single one of your employees, okay? And then usually what we do is we give you the report, right? We start a pool. Right? As to which employee put down which emails, right? Um, but it's cheap, right? It's three dollars a user a month or something like that, right? So think about it, you know, is three dollars a month per employee worth getting them to train as to what's a good email? How do I look at a header? You know, how do I see what email address kit it came from, right? There, there's, it's an invaluable service, right? Because it's only going to protect your business when we're talking about the fact that the majority of breaches happen because of employees, right? So why wouldn't we not want to train them, right? When customers come back and say, ah, you know, $3 a user a month, you know, I got 100 employees, okay, so $300 a month is not worth protecting your network. Okay, so this is something that, um, Mark got into, right, and I was actually a little surprised, right, when he asked the question of how many people have cyber liability insurance, right? So um, I was going to ask Mark, but I didn't want to put him on the spot, right? Everything that I've seen when it comes to cyber liability insurance and customers to have it, it's not all that expensive to add to your policies, okay? So 
when you're talking about that you can't control sometimes what your employees do and you know they lose a laptop, they forget a laptop on a subway, right? Why wouldn't you not want to protect your business by having a policy in place, right? You have a policy in place in case an employee trips and say somebody gets hurt. Why would you not want to have a, 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 a policy in place that prevents you, right, from harm should you become vulnerable during a cyber attack? Um, it's almost at the point now where we ask this question of every single one of our customers. And I can tell you, like Mark said, he mentioned the fact that it's not going to be long before we say, you don't have one in place? I don't know if I can do business with you, right? Um, just like you go and you do work at any build, building, they're going to ask for your insurance, right? So you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself, right? I'm glad to see that Mark, because I didn't know about some of the things that Mark added where, hey, okay, like reputation damage, uh, revenue loss due to cyber attacks, that they actually are including that. Because lots of times, hey, look, as many layers as you put in place, right, and as Warren I mentioned, right, I may not be able to control Betty from clicking on an email, right? I'll do everything I can and give all the options that we can to help Betty understand what she should and should not click on. Betty's having a bad day or she's not understanding, right? Yeah, Betty may click on something by mistake. Right? What if you click on something but there's no link or an attachment? Are you still at risk? Depends on what it is. <clears throat> Warren mentioned this. Mark mentioned this. This is key, right? Eventually something's going to happen, right? So when it does happen, what is the plan? What steps am I following? Who am I calling? Right? We try and put this in place also at every single customer. I want them to know, hey, look, when something happens, here's the steps that you're going to take. Also, here are the steps that we're going to take, right? You know, here in this case of this manufacturer company that we're working with through this <coughs> malware attack, right, one of the first things I would have told them was, hey, look, bring down the switch. Right? I don't want it spreading anymore, right? So it's key to know what everybody's role is when you have something like this. Just like have a fire, right? There typically is something posted, right? Here's how you get out of the building, right? Here's what happens. The fire alarm's going to go off. The sprinkler's going to happen. There's a plan in place. Same exact thing here. They also mentioned disaster recovery. Okay, great. I have this. What's my next plan, right? So when we talk about it, most companies that I've seen, right, have some sort of DR plan. Okay, great. There's a fire, there's a flood, you know, we're going to call, no, nah, it's not Surf Pro, it's, uh, huh? Uh, we, had, we had a customer, they had a, they had a flood, right? Um, and they had this agreement with, the name's going to come to me, um, where basically you call them up and you declare a disaster and they basically send the cavalry, right? Within 24 hours. They had a trailer in their parking lot, a satellite in their parking lot for phones, they had 40 computers, and the next day, people walked in and went to work inside the trailer uh, because they had this service. And it was really cheap, too. I mean, I'm sure once the final bill came out that insurance paid for, it wasn't cheap, but the monthly service to be able to hit that button when you have this plan was cheap. I know that Mark mentioned transfer of risk, right? So this is definitely something that in the insurance world, they talk about all the time, right? Transfer of risk. You guys want to do the same exact thing, right? Right now, you guys own the risk, right? You have to teach your employees, right? You got to make sure your IT is putting proper things in place and security measures in place, that you have existing policies and procedures, right? You want to be able to transfer as much of that risk as you can, right? So you transfer it by doing the layered approach, by having cyber liability insurance, right? By having a plan. <clears throat> I 
IoT is going to change the world, right? You all agree with that, right? We're talking about Nest thermostats, right? We're talking about Ring. We're talking about White Wife's yoga pad, right? All these things are going to connect to the internet, right? They're all going to get an IP, and they all have to be protected, right? <clears throat> One of the other customers that we're working with um, is a manufacturer of soap products, okay? Believe it or not, they have a problem with rodents getting into their warehouse and eating the product, okay? They could not find where it was coming from, right? Exterminators came in. I don't know where they're coming in from. I can't see it, so on and so forth. We actually put cameras in, right, with infrared, so that when one of these crossed an area, it sent off all kinds of alarms, okay? The point that I'm trying to make here is that's a real-world example of IoT and the things that are just coming down, right? And all of these things are connected to the, to the network, right? We met with another customer yesterday. Hey, we're going to put new phones in. Hey, we're going to put speakers in, Sonos in. Hey, great, we're going to put cameras in. Hey, we're, somebody's going to walk up to the front desk and instead of a person being there. They're going to press a button that's going to turn the camera on, right? All these things are connected to the Internet, right? They're all getting an IP, right? So you've got to make sure that they're secure, right? We've got to make sure that they're segmented. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same exact boat, the same thing that happened with Target, right? Where, hey, look, they didn't separate the HVAC system, and that's how they got breached. <clears throat> All right, so we talked about security awareness training, right? Videos, phishing tests, right? Um, and the good thing, again, good thing about Noble 4, right, is they're one of the leaders that's out there. They're updating their videos. They have thousands of videos, right, on all different topics, right? We make, them wa we make employees watch two. Um, the phishing test, it's not like I'm getting this email from, you know, some retail store which I've never done business with, right? They're real phishing tests, right? They're from Macy's. They're from Facebook. They're from things that we use every day in life. And unless you've watched the videos, you may or may not be able to pick out what's a good email and what's not. been in business for 23 years, right? One of the things I've learned, right, is that typically employees, right, will do what you inspect and not what you expect, right? So if you're going to do this, right, and it doesn't necessarily have to be when it comes to security awareness training, but anything, right? You gotta make sure that we're following through on it. It's one thing to say, hey, go take those videos, and it's another thing to make sure that they actually watch them. And then it's another thing to make sure that they actually understood them by doing these phishing tests, which is why No Before does it this way. And again, when we're talking about $3 a user a month, it's an invaluable service. So when we talk about managed security, right? We're talking about the same exact thing that we're doing to our house today, right? We're talking about, I'm putting in the alarm, I'm locking the doors, right? And yes, there are times where our employees will open the front door and let us in, right? We wanna try and prevent that, right? And if it does come in, we wanna be alerted on it, right? Warren talked about, hey look, there are tools out there, right? That will alert us if the backup doesn't work, right? There are tools that will alert us that, that hey, look, a password, somebody signs in with a password wrong three times, right? There are tools that are out there that says if somebody's knocking on a firewall, right? Same exact thing that we're doing for our house, right, with the alarm. Hey, look, if somebody breaks a window, the alarm's going to go off, right? Somebody opens up a window, the alarm's going to go off, right? <clears throat> we got to do the same exact thing with the network, right? And that's when it becomes the managed security. Right? Antivirus, monitoring, backup, policies, procedures, all of these things that we've been talking about. All three of us that sit up there almost said the same exact thing, I would say, right? Mark gave his piece on a little bit more on the insurance side, right? Warren gave his piece more maybe on the technical side for right, but also 
the layered approach, right? And I'm here probably talking more about, hey, layered approach, but also training, right? Also talking about how you're going to secure it, talking about employees, right? Security is now the cost of doing business. It's got to be a line item, right? I'm just curious, by show of hands, right? Who's actually owner of the organization? Okay. One of the things when I speak to owners, right, they'll say, right, is that what's my highest cost to do business, right? Typically it's people, okay? What's the second? Technology is now second, right? Technology now trumps rent, okay? So between the technology you have to put in place to run your business, the technology you have to put in place to build out your services, but also the technology you have to put in place to protect and secure your network. <clears throat> so these are just some standards up here. Hey, look, if you're going to take credit cards, you got to make sure you're PCI compliant, right? HIPAA we know is for healthcare. Um, this 800-171 is typically a uh, defense contract standard. Um, but again, the point here is that, hey look, everybody needs managed security. And in this day and age, it doesn't matter where it is, right? I can honestly tell you that my company has sold more cloud-based servers, right, in the past two years than actual physical boxes, okay? So it does not matter where it is. It does not matter if it's in Amazon. It does not matter if it's in Microsoft. It does not matter if it's in somebody else's data center. It's the same exact thing, right? It needs to be protected, whether it's in your four walls or somewhere in the cloud where nobody knows where it is, right? <clears throat> and to go along with that statement, right, typically is, hey, look, typically we're typing in data on some sort of computer, web browser, terminal, whatever it may be, and we think it's going to, you know, the server that maybe it's in our four walls, maybe it's in the cloud, but what we don't understand, what happens is, yes, that data you're entering is going from your computer to the switch that you're connected to, maybe to a IDF switch, then to your firewall, and then across to the internet, right? So there are multiple points where that data can be intercepted, and to one of the points that Warren brought up, there are multiple points that has to be logged in order to show where that data went across the network. <clears throat> so simply put, right, real easy, not being secure really puts your company at risk, right? I think I've given you some examples of things that we've seen, right, of just employees just by clicking on something or not paying attention or not realize that I'm not talking to the owner of the company, right? These are the types of things that I see every single day, right? Um, somebody has done something, clicked on something, not realized they're doing something, not paying attention, or have not properly been trained. And we go as far as, hey, look, it's one thing you don't want to train your employees, right? So, okay, you have a breach, we'll help, we'll fix, no problem, right? Then we'll suggest you train your employees, okay? Round two, right? Same exact thing happens, right? We'll fix, we'll do this. Now you need to train your employees, right? Round three, you're gonna have a problem, right? And to go back to that one point, right, of the employee that actually had their email hacked, where their invoice went out from the hacker watching it for 60 some odd days, the next person that had a breach in that company was her. Same exact person. And typically I tell people if, even if you are providing security awareness training to Mary, Mary clicks on it once, okay, Mary made a mistake, everyone makes mistakes. Mary clicks on it a second time, we need to retrain Mary, okay? Mary clicks on it a third time, right? Does Mary really need to be here because she's really putting your business at risk. All right, <clears throat> questions? Thoughts? Anybody have answers? Every, everything's moving to the cloud. Mm -hmm. 
I won't ask you, I won't use the word safe. How can you make your data safer if you're storing it in the cloud? Assurances don't mean a whole lot. That's true. Right. And it's, and it's, and when I ask people if they want to move their data to the cloud, it's the first thing I question. You've got to be okay with your data not being in your four wall. Right? First question. Second question. Are you okay with not knowing where it is out there? Is that I can tell you that even if you put it on Azure or Amazon where it is, I don't know where it is. Right? So, yeah, there are things to do in place, right? So, hey, look, you can put some security measures in place so that, you know, only I can get through to that data when I'm inside your network, right? When I'm inside your IP address range, right? So the answer to your question is, you can put things in place to help with that, and you gotta lay out those layers like we discussed, and if you do that, you should be good. But, <laughs> The first thing is getting over that hurdle of, hey, look, it's not going to be in my closet anymore. Right? It's going to be somewhere else. We have about 10 hard drives in the garage. Yeah. We know where they are. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> now you're not going to know where they are anymore. And again, the funny thing about it, too, is like, like I was saying, is that I think this year alone, what are we in, April, right? I think my business, right, has probably sold three servers. Physical servers, right? Everything else is cloud. Yeah. So. Sure. You're talking about I, like in their IT department? Yeah, IT security. I, I think that companies that have internal IT yeah. Yeah. are typically the worst. Here's the reason why, right? So a company like Warren's, a company like mine, that typically we do outsourced IT, right? We're on top of all this, right? We see it. We have multiple customers across multiple industries, right, that have different things going on all the time, right? When you have internal IT, they know your system. They know what's going on in your network, right? They don't necessarily know about everything else that goes on the outside. I'm not saying it's all of them, right? But typically when I see internal IT, they are typically the most vulnerable. I'm sorry if anybody's here tonight. Sorry. I know you are. My question is a little bit. Yeah. 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 It's not related to business, but uh, related to uh, you know the Russian interfering with you know United States election. Uh -huh. So it's scary when you know other country basically. Sure. You know we are top in terms of security, mm -hmm. IT, but how could this happen though? Can you repeat the question? That the, the question is regarding around security with Russian issue, with the election, and so on and so forth. The issue is, right, so one of the things I put up on there was a standard, right? So the Department of Defense has a security standard, okay, that they want all of their contractors, subcontractors, to follow. The issue is, it costs a lot of money to follow that compliance, right? So there are companies out there that don't want to do it, right? So the same thing with HIPAA, the same thing with PCI, right? They throw out these guidelines, right? And these security standards and compliances that you should follow, right? You don't follow them, right? You're at security risk, right? You could potentially be fined if you are found out, but if you're not found out, right? You're just putting yourself at risk and anything else that connects to your network. So the answer to your question is, yes, how does it happen? Because not everybody follows the same exact security standards. Just to follow up, uh, I'm in healthcare. GE and Siemens, they're not HIPAA compliant. Mm -hmm. And their attitude is tough. Well, the funny thing about HIPAA, right, is PCI is very black and white. Right? you got to do this in order to be compliant. HIPAA, little gray, right? Hey, look, we recommend you do this. Right? We recommend you do logging. Right? We recommend you put a scene tool in place. Is it required? Probably not. Right? But they'll recommend it. Right? Um, but I have seen more audits when it comes to HIPAA over the past year than I've probably seen over the past couple. Sir? It's kind of an observation in my world with the hierarchy of effective system control and training. 
Hopkins like elimination substitution here in control. So biggest vulnerability will come with the employees. So training is not going to be that effective as you said. So and you what's, so what's and you think that because why? Because we've seen when you put in you know when you put in corrective action, this type of thing with training and procedures doesn't really solve the problem. It's not effective. So, and it does not matter what level of employee down here or up on top? No. So, I can tell you this, right? So, there are two things. Number one is everybody inside our company has gone through security awareness training, even myself, right? even the president, right? Um, and we do that hopefully to lead by example, right? So, that's number one. Um, number two is typically your higher level management. They're the hardest to get. Hey, look, okay, go take this training session. You got to watch, right? Like, are you kidding me, right? Uh, but the funny thing is, right, is you'll find that I bet you if you go and you look at the number of breaches that happen, right, to employees, I'll bet you the employee that's you know the AR person versus a C level person, the number of breaches that happen because of phishing. I don't know the statistic, but I have to guess it's probably pretty close, right? As who an employee is. Um, the other thing that I can say is this, right, is that it's a requirement of your job, right? So you may have requirements to say, hey, Bob, right, in order to use this piece of machinery, you need to go through training, take a test, whatever it may be, right, to work inside this department. I got to train you, right? And hopefully by the time I'm done training you, you understand what you're doing, right? If he makes a mistake, right, inside your organization, you're going to tell him about it, and you're going to train him about it. Right. He makes his mistake a second time, maybe you'll write him off. He makes his mistakes the third time, he may not be there, right? This is the same exact thing. It is a requirement of your job in order to take this security awareness training. You don't? I, mean, I don't know which, you know, manufacturing, I know it's hard people to find people, but, you know, Sometimes, you know, an example may have to be set. That's the way I look at it. Sir? Um, we have phishing tests every couple of months. Excellent. And the, the common one is you have a package, uh, click here for the tracking. UBS, sure. Yeah. Hmm? And, uh, I've had to look up the tracking, the, uh, the address, and there are times it's pointing to a field somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just to say, you know, that's phishing. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you this, sir. <coughs> Another example I'll give you. So we've done business with a company in New Jersey for a while, right? They're an IT company that's much smaller than we are. Sometimes they can't handle the size orders that they get, right? So they help, we help with them, right? So they got an order from University of Texas, right? And they gave me the PO, right? Hey, Matt, we've done, started to do business with University of Texas. They need the Cisco gear. Can you ship it down to Texas? Absolutely. So send me the PO, send me the address. Great. They send me the PO. I send the address. I send the bill, they call me three days later, yeah, that address, yeah, it's not the University of Texas. It's some place in the middle of nowhere, and nobody knows where it is. So they called the University of Texas and said, hey, look, we got a PO from you. Eh, no, we've been seeing that for a past year or so, right? That's not us, right? It's a hundred grand order. But they eventually made good on with me. But I had nothing to do with it, but... Any other questions? I have a few comments and observations. Sure. Actually, I personally have, let's say, I worked in the Department of Defense as a contractor for several years, and I had an experience where we were moving from one base to the next base. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of activity with equipment and all that, and, and people and staff. We were actually hacked internally. Like the government server was hacked, mm -hmm. where we were compromised, and we went through a credit monitoring system, which I still actually am part of right now as a result of that hacking. So it's just very important for everybody to be aware it's a consistent basis. Another thing as well, which you brought up in your presentation in previous ones, is that say, employee, let's say, access to emails and stuff like that. Fatigue is a factor. Sure. If the person is stressed out and fatigued, sure. then the hacker has an opportunity. Yeah. Let's say, I see that, let's say, for example, you're all conscious and aware, but fatigue, I believe, is also a yeah. Working later, you work, work overnight? Out. Yeah, definitely. Sure. You know, Absolutely. So data can be compromised in that Absolutely. nature as well. Any other questions for the speaker? 
Thanks for having me.